Good morning and welcome to Tuesday morning prayer on this glorious sunny summer morning. The rays of brother sun are shining and all is well. I pray it is with you this morning. And on YouTube, we welcome our dear sister Betty, who's joined us today, and dear sister Jan. Welcome. And Burada, Sister Pam in South Wales. And good morning, dear Sister Barbara in Sweden. And anybody else? And dear Amir, beautiful Amir from beautiful Northern Ireland. Good to have you with us, Amir. And I pray you're well. And good morning to David, dear brother David, who's joined us this morning. So let us begin by just being still for a moment and allow the Holy Spirit, that divine oneness who lives within us, reawaken us to who we are, a beautiful child of God. This morning, I'm dedicating my light for our beloved sister Karina in Sweden, who emailed me early this morning to say that she so missed morning prayer yesterday on her first day return to work in Sweden. And it was a beautiful email. And she was yearning to be back at morning prayer. But of course, she has to work. So I dedicate my prayers for Karina and for all God's children who are coming out of lockdown and returning to work with a lot of mixed feelings and a lot feeling vulnerable because of COVID. But may I also remember each one of you and your requests and together we bring them to the Lord and we remember the whole family of God, of all faiths, color, creed, ethnicity and lifestyle choices. Let us be still. Let us be still in the presence of love. And now we 
come to the beautiful monastery or the abbey, St. Mary's Abbey in Waterford in Ireland, as we play the bells to begin our prayer. We have two prayers this morning. Our first prayer is from the Book of Peace Prayers. And I can only speak from my heart, but I ask the Holy Spirit to choose our prayers and our hymn. And this is what I got for us this morning. And the prayer comes from Naftali Broer on a question of attitude. And Naftali is a rabbi and ordained as an Orthodox rabbi age 22 and for over two decades has served as the spiritual leader of congregations in the United States and Britain. He's a columnist and published author. Wow. Father, Mother, God in heaven, may we find the strength and inspiration to see the world that you made in a positive light. Today, may we bring hope and happiness to all those around us. That is a good prayer to start a new day, don't you think? And coming to the little book of prayers, Celtic Prayers and Reflections by Jenny Giles. And the heading of this prayer is to follow the saints, all the holy men and women of all faith traditions. Help us to follow the example of Aidan, the patient one. May we walk in the steps of Cuthbert, the gentle one. Give us grace to tread the path of Hilda, the wise one. Encourage us to live as Chad, the willing one. May we journey on the pilgrim way as Ked, the traveling one. All of those names are Celtic monks who became saints here in England. And our hymn is from the Unitarian hymn book, Sing Your Faith. And the hymn chosen for us today is hymn number 106, Nothing Distress You. And it is the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila, whose works we use as part of the formation of our novices in the Teo community. And the manuscript we use is entering your castle, entering your soul. Nothing distress you, nothing affright you. Everything passes, God will abide. Patient endeavor, Accomplish all things, who God possesses needs not beside. Lift your mind upward, fair are his mansions, nothing distress you, cast fear away. Follow Christ freely, his love will light you, nothing affright you in the dark way. See the world's glory fading its splendor, everything passes, all is denied. Look ever homeward to the eternal, faithful in promise, God will abide. Love in due measure, measureless goodness, patient endeavor, run to love's call. Faith burning brightly, be your soul's shelter, 
who hopes believing accomplishes all. Hell may assail you, it cannot move you. Sorrows may grieve you, faith may be tried. Though you have nothing, he is your treasure, who God possesses needs not beside. The great Saint Teresa of Avila, born in 1515, and one amazing saint who became the doctor of the church and who was almost about to be burnt at the stake during the Reformation because she was perceived as some form of witch or medium. But she wasn't. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when she embraced Christ in her little monastery in Spain, she would levitate. And some of her sisters who seen this were troubled and reported her to the bishop, hence being brought before the great theologians and Dominicans at the Reformation. And they asked her, what have you to say in your defense? Bearing in mind, she was ready to be burnt along with many other spiritual sightseers. And she turned round and said, and she wanted to tell them to get lost, but the spirit silenced her but spoke through her, and her words are still echoing in my heart today. What would a mere peasant nun know of such great things? There you go, and she was spared the fire. Our first reflection for today is from the late Father Henry G. M. Nouvelle. Proclaiming God's love is his theme. It seems the closer I come to the poor and broken people of the world, the greater my desire is to speak directly about God and the less I feel impelled to deal with the burning issues of our day. This doesn't mean that I am not any more interested in these issues. In fact, I am more interested in them than ever. But somehow, the way I enter into these issues has shifted. Presently, I am very much involved in the life of handicapped people, and I'm becoming more and more involved in the struggle of people who have AIDS, as well as people who live with great inner anguish and pain. Somehow these people are calling me to be more and more God-centered and seem to ask me less to help them solve their problems than to reveal to them God's immense, intimate love for them. He was an amazing man, was Henry J. M. Nouvelle. Truly an amazing man who suffered from severe depression but he soldiered on, like we all do. And our second reflection from the little book by Brigitte Marie in God's Presence. Her heading, Fear God Only, and it's underpinned by a quote from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 5. There is no one in the heavenly realm or on earth to fear, but God alone. Don't fear people and certainly don't fear Satan. For people can only do things to your physical body, which will eventually return to dust from which it came. The enemy only has the authority given to him by God. And you have the choice each day not to take the bait. Fear God, knowing that he has the authority to cast you into hell or allow you to reign in the heavenly realm. Your life resides in God's hands. 
your plans for the rest of your life ultimately sit with God and will only manifest if God allows them to. So yes, fear the one true living God that makes all things come to pass. Amen. And from our little book of Rumi, from his book, The Garden of the Soul, the Heart and the Spirit, this is what I was given to share. If you have no lover, look for one. If you have, why aren't you rejoicing? If your lover is not compliant, mirror him or her. And if he is not polite, teach him manners. If he is standing in your way, fight him. But instead you sit here idly pondering over the strangeness of life. What is strange, my friend, is you not seeking the beyond. You are being of light, yet your heart is shrouded in darkness. You are gold melting in the furnace, yet you still search for gold. Have you forgotten you are an old drunkard familiar with love's wine? I do like that. Make your spirit blend to all but God. Beg at night so the radiant moon hidden in the shadow of your being may rise. I drink the wine that is the fire of love from the hand of my beloved. Become the wood for the beloved's fire. Your life will not be wasted. Beautiful. And finally, from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, from his tiny little book of wisdom, we read what we were given this morning. The first reflection, meditate on the truth. If we can realize and meditate on ultimate truth, it will cleanse our impurities of mind and thus eradicate the sense of discrimination. And on meditation, meditation should form the basis for action. I so love these little quotes because they're succinct. They don't ramble and ramble. They're straight to the heart. I pray they've touched yours. Now, at this point in prayer, we come to the beautiful canticle of Zechariah, known as the Benedictus. Here I am.
Bless our Savior, who by his rising to new life has freed the world from fear. Lord Jesus, we offer you our prayer this morning. Take to yourself our cares, our hopes, and our needs. Christ, our loving Lord, in your kindness, be with the sick and the poor, the weak and the dying. Bring them your comfort. Lord Jesus, we pray that through our troubles, we may learn to feel the sufferings of others. Help us to show them your love and compassion. In the silence of our hearts, we commend our day to God. And now, my dear friends, this part of morning prayer is an important part of our journey as pilgrims seeking truth, but not seeking any truth, but embracing divine truth. And that truth is already within you, but so often it's compromised by trying to please so many people where we end up losing that sense of who we are. I hold in my hand a lighted candle. To the world, it's just a candle. But to you and me, who are called by God, to be God's prayer partners for unity and peace, 
for healing of all whose lives have been impacted or affected by COVID. A genius solution COVID. to balding scalp that we you can do in your home. Microneedling is known to boost God. scalp health and do. And we give thanks for gremlins. We try to interfere. But for all those who are mourning loved ones who've died of COVID and who sadly have been denied closure and whose lives are impacted by deep loss. Let us be still in the presence of God. And as we focus on the flame, we know in our soul it's a symbol that the divine is present. Not only within us, but all around us. So let us come to this a beautiful divine oneness. Come to a loving Father, Mother, God, who has many names, and yet has called you and me to the table of love. and receive the Lord's blessing. I call on the Lord Christ to come and touch us, to touch us in our mind, to release us from a negative mindset, to release us from fear, that is an illusion. It has no face, but yet it eats away at our energy and cripples the soul, alienating us from a loving God. Let us take the words of Jesus to our heart when he says, do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Just be still. Be still and know that our God is here. And the Christ is waiting for us to invite him into our space. He waits patiently because he respects our free will given to us by God. And this gift has not been given to the angelic realm, but to us here on earth. So let us now invite, invoke, and call upon our God to call upon Christ, or maybe the Lord Buddha, Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna, Aramahanda, Yogananda, Allah, whoever your God is, they are all different names and aspects of one supreme being. I am presence of God. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to reawaken me in my mind, my body and soul, that though I feel I have no purpose on earth, but you have a plan for me and for all of us gathered here. And you ask very little of us. In fact, you wish to give us more than we can give you. Touch our hearts now, Lord. And help us experience your healing touch of selfless love.
Let us relax. And be still. And now, just visualize Jesus right beside you. doesn't condemn you like we condemn ourselves. He opens his arms to you as his father did to the prodigal son who spent his fortune on righteous living. But just see that prodigal son who was me where we squander all that God has given us. And he comes home not in fine clothes, but designer shoes and jewelry dripping from his body. He comes home in torn shoes and rags and smells to the high heavens, having worked with the pigs and sleeping with them. But as he struggled to come home, he swallowed his pride. And in the distance, he could see an old man running toward him. It was his father, who didn't lecture him, he embraced him and he had tears running down his eyes, tears of joy that the son he loved, whom he thought was lost, was found and he came home. This is the Jesus I love. He forgives us and he waits for us to come home, to speak our truth, his truth, and to love ourselves, to love ourselves with a passionate love and that we have nothing to fear. Imagine you now, the prodigal son. Yeah. You took a chance. You followed your ego, your temper. You enjoyed the fine living, dining, dancing, drinking to your heart's content and getting embroiled in all kinds of negative stuff that caused you to lose your way, to lose God's inner peace. But then you realized the lights of the city and easy living, something was missing. God's inner peace. And you decide to come home to your God. We represent what the prodigal son represents us. Our God runs to us to say, I love you. I forgive you. Do you forgive yourself? Some do, many don't. Many beat themselves up with a stick and end up becoming mentally ill with their guilt, their religiosity, and their fear. Bring it to Christ. 
His arms are open to you. Let him touch you now. Come, Lord Jesus. You are the way, my way. You are the truth, my truth. You are the life, my life. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. But show me. How may I serve you today? Show me, Lord. And in those arms, a great weight has been lifted from each one of us. And that little spark within our spirit has been ignited. The spiritual womb of God within us has become alive. Where we can breathe in God's love and become whole again. But if you are really struggling this morning, or you've come to your wit's end, why don't you take the words of Jesus to your heart? He reminds us to name, to bless and release only to him all that weighs us down and leave it with Christ. And then he asks us to keep thanking him throughout the day because he's already answered our prayer and that is the power of faith that God gives us a precious gift that we have to nurture through prayer and discipline and fasting to enhance that spiritual equilibrium that allows us to connect with Christ, where we can see him, where we can hear him, and where he touches us. Be still now. Be still and know that you are loved and that nothing will ever alienate you from that love but you if you follow your ego and listen to those negative voices that mainly come from the Antichrist who seeks to lead you astray. He's done it to me many times, many, many times. But he's not going to win this time. Nor will he with you. Let us play the Lord's Prayer.
Almighty and ever-living God, strengthen our faith, our hope, and our love. May we do with loving hearts what you ask of us and come to share the life you promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and bring you peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow. And now is a closing prayer. I was guided to play this for you. It is a gift from the Lord God that you love to thank you for giving up your free time to come together as members of God's virtual community of prayer, as God's prayer partners for peace in the world. Enjoy this beautiful Jewish blessing. Baruch Hashem. Adonai. Baruch Hashem Adonai. We praise you, Lord. to be part of your people, the ones that are called by your name. Could I be chosen as one of your own? Would it be that our blood is the same? How can a stranger or a remnant of nations belong to the you showed your grace when the branches were broken and I grafted into the vine. Oh, I said, I don't die. Oh, I said, I How could you show me such bountiful mercy by taking the lives of the land? Your love is greater than I can imagine. I bless you with all that I am. Be 
is to you, Jesus, the veil has been parted, and what once was secret is known. Now I can cry to you, Father, my Father, and praise you as one of your own. Amen. Hashem Adonai, dear friends, go in peace to love and serve the God who called to your heart to come and share your gifts from God with all gathered here. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Exet Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum. And may the peace and the love and the joy of a loving Father, Mother, God, of many names and none, bless, protect, and strengthen you this day. Go out into the world wearing your mask, but share a smile from your heart with those you meet. But if they cannot see your smile via your mouth, they can see it in your eyes. Thank you for joining me. But thank you for letting me praise God with you. Because that is a gift. And it needs to be blessed and acknowledged. And if you are free, I'm back again at five o'clock London time this evening. Take care. God bless. God bless. And to all our dear friends here on YouTube, oh, it is always a blessing that when we have problems with Facebook as we are of late, I guess it's the energy of all of us together because we're all coming from a good place. But to dear Sister Jan, whom I've known for a very, very long time, and a true friend, bless you, bless you, Jan. And to dear Beth, lovely to have you with us. And of course, dear Claire, we pray for you today, and Adrissa, and for Barbara, Bless you, Barbara, and, and dear Sister Sue, who's also with us. And who else? I think that's it. Plenty of you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Amen. <laughs>